in 2016, uh, we made a series of videos at our Brampton Blackgrass site, looking at uh, how we needed to change our management of soil to um, allow us to control blackgrass in a, in a better way. Uh, and we wanted to investigate whether um, those changes to soil management would be a problem to us or beneficial to the soil. And here we are today in January 2020. We've had a very, very wet autumn, as we all know. Some places have seen double their annual rainfall. And we thought it was a good opportunity to make a, a few more uh, short videos uh, looking at uh, conditions out here in the field and how we uh, should inspect those and ascertain where our problem is uh, so that we can make the right decisions in, in managing the water uh, through and out of uh, our soil and hopefully continue to make our soils more resilient. So today we're actually near Boston in Lincolnshire, uh, silt-based soil, some of the best soil in the country, um, but also uh, soil that is suffering um, almost the worst uh, because of the conditions we've had over autumn 19. Typically these soils grow crops that uh, are grown for uh, major supermarkets, um, potatoes, field veg, onions, that type of thing. Um, and uh, when the crops need harvesting uh, to go in for, for sale, seasonal sale, they have to be harvested almost regardless of field conditions. So these soils can suffer really quite badly. We're going to look at several different scenarios um, in this series of videos. Um, so some really badly damaged fields uh, and fields like the one in front of me where we've just got uh, water uh, ponding uh, on the surface as an initial assessment. Um, so we're going to um, go through them field by field, situation by situation um, and using our spade, this is our key tool uh, to investigate why this water is sitting here uh, and what the best course of action would be to rectify the situation um, and how we can start to build resilience into these, these soils that uh, are going to be managed with uh, the plough. I think there's little doubt about that because of the cropping rotation that we have, uh, but how we can try and build resilience into them going forward so that when we get conditions like this again, which undoubtedly we will, uh, these, these fields can handle it in a much, uh, much better way. So we've dug a couple of holes, one where water was actively sitting as a puddle on the surface, a bit of a gateway kind of situation or a heavy tram line situation, and then um, a hole from soil where we've got a clear cap, bare, uh, clearly wet, but there's no water actually ponding uh, on the surface. Typical reaction to these kind of situations is to get a subsoiler out. This year it may well be that actually because of time constraints the plough just goes in but the subsoiler will be planned um, to come into these fields fairly shortly after the next crop um, to alleviate the problems perceived to be at depth uh, in these fields right now. Now those problems might be at depth but they might not be. So it's really really important that we use our spade, dig some holes and inspect uh, and understand exactly what's going on. So in, in the first hole that we, we dug where the water was actually ponding, we can see a very clear line on the top of the soil where this silt type soil that was cultivated to put, in this case, some cover cropping in. That soil is really over fine. It's run together, blocked all the pores on the surface. We've got a distinct line here where that water is not passing through. It continues to be damp in this soil because it is so it's a gateway type situation, so it is compacted in this upper zone of the, of the soil, so it's still damp uh, just in this zone here. But as we get deeper into the, into the soil, we can see that this soil is actually, although it's compressed and slightly compact, it is not wet because the water is not getting down to that area of the field because the surface has been plugged. So the ponding on these fields is due to this capping uh, not due to compaction lowering the soil that is stopping water getting to, to drainage. In the second hole, which is literally two feet away from the first one, but has not got that more excessive wheeling damage in it, 
still been cultivated and drilled with uh, a cover which hasn't established well in this particular area. So we've got predominantly bare soil. We can see again, we've got this wet line across the top of the soil. It's distinctly wet in here, um, very gooey um, with this cap on the surface. But again, lower in the soil, we can see where we've got these odd cover plants growing in here. We've got roots growing all the way down through that soil. It's really quite soft, breaks up quite well, um, but it's really very dry. Again, showing us that the water is being held up at the surface. It is a surface infiltration problem. It is not a drainage out of the bottom of the soil problem. So actually getting a subsoiler into this would be probably, certainly at this point, counterproductive. The soil is, is not in a condition that will shatter well through a subsoiler and remove compaction. It is too wet, too wet for that. Um, but we need to sort out this water penetration through the surface. So we could do that simply with the plough for, for right now. So we can set our skimmers to crack that top area completely off, um, break that up, um, turn over this drier soil here, uh, giving us a nice coarse surface, uh, open it up to weather so it can dry in the, in the spring and, and we can get our new crop in. So surface infiltration is the problem here and we need to work that from the top down, not from a, a deep cultivation uh, up. Thank you.